This is Brother Peter Diamond, VaticanCatholic.com. We received an email from a person named Turner objecting to our denunciation and condemnation of homosexuality. Turner's objection isn't particularly coherent, but people should get the gist of Turner's argument. We want to share it because an important issue is covered in response. Turner writes, quote, I don't get why it should be a problem to force people to support gay people. How about I say all black people should be put in jail? and someone tried to change my mind on African-American people. Would the person who has a problem with what I believe in have the problem, or would I have the problem? According to what you said, the person trying to change my mind is wrong. End quote, Turner. So, Turner is essentially trying to equate the Christian condemnation of homosexuality to racism. To, for example, a position that supports putting all people of a particular skin color in jail. Turner is basically arguing... If your view should be considered acceptable by society, then why shouldn't the views of the racist just described be accorded the same respect and toleration? Our response is as follows. You are in darkness, and your reasoning is flawed. The essential question which cuts to the heart of the issue is this. What is your standard for acceptable activity and what society should endorse or condone? Our standard is clear. It is the teaching of God and the natural law. According to the teaching of God and the natural law, as reflected in the teaching of the church and the Bible, racism is sinful since we're all from Adam and Eve. That standard tells us that it's immoral to put people in jail simply because they have a certain skin color. However, according to that same standard, that is, the teaching of God and the natural law, homosexuality is unnatural and perverse, and homosexual activity is abominable, similar to pederasty and bestiality. In other words, there's a reason that homosexual activity is not procreative. It's not natural, and it was not intended by God. According to that standard, homosexuality should be condemned by society. That's our standard. So what is your standard? Since you reject the teaching of God and the natural law, your standard can only be what the culture or society considers to be acceptable at the time. Therefore, when society considers homosexuality to be perverted and unacceptable, as American society did until recently. Logically, you would have to support the condemnation of homosexuality. Yet, when the views of society or the culture shift on homosexuality, as they have in Western culture, you would then have to change your view. To be consistent, you would then have to accept or defend homosexuality and support forcing others to do so as well. And when the society or the culture goes a bit further and begins to consider pederasty, that is, sexual activity between men and boys, to be acceptable, just as it now considers homosexuality to be acceptable, you would then have to defend pederasty and require others to do so as well. Do you see why your position is unreasonable and evil? It leaves you with no standard except what society deems acceptable at that particular time. Many ancient cultures practiced and tolerated pederasty. In fact, pederasts and pedophiles make the same arguments for their perversions that homosexuals do. If this world were allowed to continue for another decade or so, society would begin to treat pederasts and pedophiles in the same way that it currently treats homosexuals, that is, as a privileged and protected class. That is clearly the direction in which society is headed. Those who believe it's unthinkable that society would reach that point are blind. They don't realize how dramatically views about homosexuality have shifted in just a few decades. The following quote from a book written in 1995 captures how significantly society's views about homosexuality changed just from the period of 1985 to 1995. Quote, A decade ago, who would have thought that an entire book could be written on the subject of homosexuality and education, written in fact using real names, real schools, and real incidents, many of them not only positive but spectacularly so? Who would have thought that in so many buildings throughout the United States, in large cities, medium-sized suburbs, and tiny towns, There would not only be openly gay teachers, administrators, coaches, students, but also gay straight alliances, gay themed curricula. It would have seemed like a fairy tale. Dan Woog, Schools Out The Impact of Gay and Lesbian Issues on America's Schools, page 373. As this quote shows, and many others could as well, just a few decades ago, homosexuality was not tolerated or accepted by society. It wasn't promoted in mainstream culture because it was considered so abhorrent and unnatural. The same shift can and will occur concerning society's views of pederasty and pedophilia, unless God intervenes. The truth is that God's standard is the only standard. He alone is the one who is, Exodus 3.14. 
He alone created all things, Colossians 1.16. And without him nothing was made that was made, John 1.3. He alone has immortality, 1 Timothy 6.16. He alone upholds everything by the word of his power, Hebrews 1.3. When you reject God, you have nothing. And when you reject his standard, you have no standard.